Hi, this is Greg Johnson with Blue Book, and I'm here today with PMA's Richard Owen, who is VP of Global Membership. And we talked to you earlier this morning and um, about the, the stimulus bill that's coming out of the Senate and it's heading to the House on Friday morning. And originally we expected the House maybe to just pass it very quickly, and now it sounds like they're going to have some debate over it. But I want to talk to you so you could kind of help our readers uh, what what is the important things coming out of this bill that will affect the produce industry and hopefully uh, be able to help the industry as quickly as possible? Well, thanks, Greg. It's good to to be here. And yes, there was a stimulus package that it took a few days for the Senate to reach agreement on, but they did reach agreement, passed um, late yesterday, 96 to zero, and will be picked up by the House tomorrow. We thought maybe just on a cloture vote, but they're actually going to debate the bill. Uh, and at some point likely have a voice vote. So that tells me that in some sense, there are some other issues that the House wants to bring up. So we'll see what the final uh, package looks like. Um, but I think we can have assurances as soon as it's passed by the House, it will go to the president for a quick signature after that. Um, there are a number of things in this bill. Uh, it's a $2 trillion bill, the largest stimulus package ever passed by um, Congress. And um, a, a couple of things I wanted to pull out in particular that I think are relevant for our industry. One of those is a, um, a provision in there to provide low interest loans for small businesses that have been impacted by the coronavirus. And what's unique about this is as long as um, the businesses commit to not laying off employees, um, they'll be uh, reimbursed for the period that the coronavirus is affecting their business. And so that's pretty significant. That's a, a loan forgiveness uh, program uh, that I think is kind of unique to what's out there. And absolutely, uh, farmers and ranchers will be eligible for that, for that program. Um, another one that is um, still few details to know about, but there's um, uh, just under $10 billion that's set aside for aid for um, the agricultural industry, including uh, fruit and vegetable growers. That is somewhat um, to the discretion of the Secretary of Agriculture, and that's a program that there are yet to be details uh, released yet. But that's something that uh, I know a number of industry groups will be active in trying to make the case for um, how much we have been harmed in fruits and vegetables, uh, particularly knowing the perishability of the industry and particularly knowing the um, the impacts on the food service sector and how much they've been uh, hurt by uh, this downturn. So the food service uh, suppliers and that side of the industry, they would be eligible for the loan programs. Is that how you read that? Well, it's a little bit unclear how far into the system um, it goes, but I think this provision is not an agriculture provision. I think there, there are other, there are certain parameters to it, the size of your business and income, uh, but it's not built just for, farmers or ranchers, the, the loan program is, is deemed for small businesses. Um, so, you know, whether you're uh, a supplier to food service or in the food service business as a small supplier, the intent of the loan program is basically to be a bridge uh, so that you can continue once this is over, you can pick up business as quickly as possible, have your employees in place and go back to business. And that's, re that's really the heart of what this uh, was about. Okay, well, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the details and seeing how the produce industry can start to get some relief. Well, another thing that PMA has done is PMA held its first town hall this week, and it was a, a virtual meeting, and then it broke into smaller uh, targeted segment groups, and I found it very helpful. What are some other things that, that you're working on within PMA to kind of help members through this, uh, this horrible time with the pandemic? Well, thank you, Greg. I'm glad you participated in the town hall yesterday. We had uh, nearly 700 people um, that signed up and were in uh, both the, what we call the general session, kind of the introductory part of uh, overall topics, as well as five, uh, five or six different breakouts from there. Uh, the priority for PMA is really to spend time listening to our members very, very closely during this period to know what are the most important issues they have on their mind, and number two, what is it the PMA as a trade association, either ourselves or in concert with other groups uh, or other entities can do to help, um, help them weather this period and come out on the other side in a position to take off uh, and rebuild their business as quickly as possible. So we focused as an organization um, on communications with our members as much as possible, just like sharing with you 
uh, what's happening with hoarders and H2As and on the stimulus package, being making sure our members know what resources are available to them. Uh, a lot of practical information on the food safety front. You know, how do you uh, provide uh, sanitation uh, practice, best practices for your employees um, uh, on your uh, on your operation? Um, and then one of the things that we've been kind of watching from a macro level is what's happening with uh, um, demand for the products. And we know at some point, uh, for example, um, that retail has been very, very strong the last few weeks, but at some point um, that demand will uh, it may soften. And so we want to be in a position to, um, uh, to, to make sure that, that uh, interest from consumers of purchasing fruits and vegetables will continue. And we know there are a couple of segments of the industry that we represent, and I'll say floral and food service in particular, that have been directly harmed um, as much as any other part. So we're looking at unique areas to provide value, to make connections between buyers and sellers, to help um, some of, say, floral uh, suppliers as well as food service suppliers sell into the retail or other channels, which they might not otherwise. Um, and it's all about you know making sure that people understand they're still part of this big fresh produce industry, and this is about neighbors helping neighbors and associations helping our members um, get through it as, as, um, as much intact as they can. Again, so you, when you get to the other side, you're off and uh, to a running start as quickly as possible. Yeah, I certainly agree with that. And both in, in my media business and, and the broader produce industry, uh, seems like something changes every day and, and we have to be flexible. So it's good that you're having these Updated. I, I, I noticed one of the things that PMA had was a sample letter that people could alter to if they if they were asked whether or not they should be out and about in a city that's on lockdown. And of course, produce industry has been deemed one of the, the critical industries that should continue to operate during the pandemic. Yeah, and that's a great example, Greg, of, of something we created in order to put on our growers' hands. Um, it's not just for an employee to carry, but it's also it goes with a separate letter that could go with the product that's traveling, and we converted that, or we translated that into Spanish as well uh, for those employees. And we're looking at tangible things like that that has value that somebody can use on a practical day-in and day-out basis uh, to help improve their business or make it easier to do business once they're uh, up and going in the mornings. All right. Well, we appreciate you visiting, Richard, and at this time where we're all working from our homes, you get to uh, learn how my normal world works. <laughs> yeah, and you get to learn how, uh, see how my normal wor world works as well. We actually, within the PMA family, we have uh, um, uh, probably 15 of our employees that telework on a regular basis, including myself. And so we're very familiar with how you work. Um, and so we're getting, we're the trainers these days, if you will, to the rest of staff on how you uh um, how you can uh, make the most of working remotely. Yeah, that's right. Everyone's having to learn and, and some of us have a little more experience than others. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot for joining us today, Richard. Okay. Thank you, Greg.